Talk about Caribbean time. We got the foil board sitting on the side. We got the wing pumped up on the front there. Got the jib loosely out. We're doing like two knots. <laughs> Anna and the kids are dragging on the sup out the back. <laughs> Jumping up the net, going into the thing, just watching St. Lucia coastline slowly pass us by. Very cool. So finally we get to explore an island and not work on the boat or go sailing somewhere. So we get to check out St. Lucia. Pretty cool. We got to go for a ride in a bus. To check things out. We got to see some chocolate trees. Then we saw this chocolate waterfall. Which is very chocolatey and brown and not so sparkly. Um, then we saw a bug. Then we saw some pretty flowers, which was nice. And we saw some bubbly hot pools full of bubbly hot pooly muddy pool hot pooly type things. Then we got to swim in the brown hot pool muddy swimmy hot pool stuff. Kid thought it was great. Apparently this uh, mud stuff's good for you. But I'm not convinced. It certainly makes it stinky. Look, full blown overflow now we've had the rain. <laughs> But then there was the real cool part, our guide, Malcolm. He had a really cool boat. And what do you do when you got a real cool boat? You take the kids for a wrap down the, the coast. Harrison thought it was the bomb. Best day ever. When you're going fast in the boat, what better thing to do than make every dog in the world jealous and be a dog! Holy cow! Here goes Paul! Yep, yeah, now we finally get to have a decent look at the rudder stock. But just before we do, we go under the water, we find all these little fishy things and pretty coloured corals and spiky things and funny looking fish that play with spiky things. It was really cool. And a funny looking slug thing. Anyway, I'm going to leave it to Anna so that she can take you through um, what we found. So finally, it's time to inspect the hull. This is what remains of the rudder stock on our port hull. Let's have a good look at the area and we're going to check for damage. You will notice the stainless steel tube wall is quite thin. Here you can see our first failure point. It's like a dark rusty stain. And then there is a second failure point which you can see here. Now the next bit is interesting because you can see where the rudder was hanging on before it finally broke. Can you see how the metal on this side looks rough and ripped? And the next clue is the long scratch in the antifoul along our hull. This is where the rudder scraped along the hull as it broke away from the boat. So what exactly happened? Based on what we've seen, we can assume the following. Firstly, we had two points of failure in the rudder stock tube. It is important to note that these points may not have been present when we attached the new blades. We have, after all, sailed 3,000 nautical miles since then. The next clue is shown by the arrow. 
This part of the shaft is bent outwards and has ragged edges where the metal shaft was hanging on and then tore away. And lastly, we know that it tore away in this direction because of the scratches left in the hull. So our old rudders were in an efficient shape compared to our new blades, but the most significant difference is the gap between the old rudder and the hull. Our new rudders follow the hull very closely. In fact, they create a hydrodynamic seal which places a lot more load on the stocks. Whoa, hang on two seconds. Let's show how this all works. So let's look at a couple of differences between the old rudder and the new rudder. Right, so here we have the green one. This is the original one that we took off. This is a very nice representation of it because the old one actually wasn't that nice. And the blue one, which is the new blades that we'd made in Valencia. So let's have a look at the first thing. Well, the first thing is the blue one is actually smaller in area than the original one. Smaller in area means it technically can't produce as much side force. But what we did do is we made it a lot more efficient so that it made more side force than the old one. Right, first thing we did is we made it longer. How much longer and why did we make it longer? Well, we made it 85 mil longer. And more importantly, we made it 35 millimeters longer at the top. Why was this the important part? Well, this 35 millimeters at the top is where we tried to seal the rudder against the hull. And this is very important. I'll talk about that in a second. We also made it 50 millimeters longer at the bottom. Now, 50 millimeters ain't much, you know, it's, it's here nor there. But it does increase our aspect ratio. And our aspect ratio is a very, very important thing when we're talking about foils. It helps our efficiencies. It means we can produce more lift with the same or less drag, right? Really, really important factor. Right, now let's go back to this sealing against the hull. Why is this important? Well, it's pretty simple. When we seal it against the hull, we stop the high pressure and the low pressure swapping from side to side. It's as simple as that. When we have an aerofoil and it produces lift, and in our case it wants to produce lift to turn our boat, we produce a low pressure on one side and a high pressure on the other. And what happens? The high pressure wants to go and fill the low pressure. It's pretty simple, right? And if we seal the blade against the hull, we limit this or eliminate it. And that makes the area of the rudder near the hull actually continue doing what it does. If we have a big gap between the hull and the top of the rudder, it means that the high pressure can spill over into the low pressure. And what that means is that surface area at the top of the rudder is not actually producing lift anymore or producing very little amounts of lift. And what that also does is it moves our center of effort down. Anyway, that's enough of my blah, 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 blah. And we can go back to Anna and her explaining what actually went on. We have been collecting a lot of data while we sail and can analyze the performance of each rudder shape we have used. So now we can design a much more efficient rudder for Pikea. We will use round carbon tube made to our specifications for the new rudder stocks and we'll keep you updated on our progress. If you want more information, head on over to our website at youngbarnacles.com.